Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. And this time we've got, would you believe, part five of the new to oscilloscope series. I've been getting so many good comments and remarks from people, I thought um, maybe it's worth doing yet another one. So I'm not going to promise this is the last one, maybe there'll be another. But what I wanted to do this time was to take um, a fairly straightforward scope, and in the case of this video it's the my ham egg um, analog oscilloscope which is just a very simple 1970s scope uh, 10 megahertz bandwidth and I wanted to take some measurements with a modern multimeter and then compare what we get when we use the oscilloscope to make uh, some similar measurements so that's the plan um, let's start by going straight to the bench okay so I've got a um, unknown voltage um, on a couple of clips just out of shot here. And first thing you're going to do is I've got the Kaiwitz KM601. It's in auto mode so it'll detect AC or DC. So I'm just going to connect that up to the volt to the supply, let it stabilize and the meter is telling me we've got 5 volts at about 60 Hertz. So 5 volts at 60 hertz okay so i'm going to move the meter out of shot and i'm going to zoom in a little bit on the scope so i'll just do that now okay i've zoomed in a little bit onto the the scope so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to carefully adjust the y position and i'm actually using the um, camera screen here so i don't get parallax on the view and i think that's pretty much about um, centered on the on the y-axis so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach that same 5 volts at 60 Hertz that we measured on the meter to the scope and let's um, see what we get so first thing to say is we can see something there so the time base needs adjusting so let's bring that in yeah okay so we've got a waveform and it's a little bit too big for the screen so we'll drop it down okay right first thing we're going to do then is we'll have a look at measurements taken on the x-axis i.e time now i've got the probe of the scope set to times one there isn't any kind of adjustment on here for for times one or times ten but quite often that's a way you can can make a mistake if your measurements appear to be a factor of ten out make sure that you've got your scope set to times one or times ten in the case of this scope that's not adjustable this is a an old instrument so we've clearly got a sine wave that, that's very obvious and the meter made it um, to be 60 Hertz so let's see if we can confirm that now modern digital scopes will almost certainly have a little display somewhere at the corner of the screen here telling you the frequency we don't have that luxury on here um, and what we've actually got is the um, Tracy sweeping across the screen and it's showing us the waveform. So if I use the X position to position the top of that waveform there as best as I can in line with the with the graticule on the vertical line there. And now I can see that that uh, one cycle to there is one, two, three, and it's probably it isn't three and a half and it isn't three and a quarter it's about three and a third so let's call it 3.3 .3 divisions okay so 3.3 .3 divisions times the time base here which is five milliseconds per division according to that control there so that's times 0 0.005 gives us a time for a cycle of 0 0.0165 seconds now what i've measured there isn't the frequency i've measured the period so um here's the formula to convert um period to frequency very straightforward if um maths is your nemesis relax this is really simple stuff so what we've essentially got here is the frequency is equal to the reciprocal of the period or one over the period so if we do that maths and divide 0 0.0165 um, 1 divided by 0 0.0165 the reciprocal it gives us an answer certainly on my calculator of 60.6 .6, and that's 60.6 .6 cycles per second because remember we're measuring the period in seconds 
so it's 60 Hertz so yes we agree with the meter there we've certainly got 60 Hertz um, it's probably worth pointing out that this flashing that you get in here this sort of slight undulation um, doesn't actually occur uh, when you're looking at the screen um, this is simply a function of the refresh rate of the camera and the the speed of the the time base in fact if I speed up the time base uh, you'll see it does um, settle down okay so now let's let's try making some measurements um, on the y-axis or voltage if you like so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to recenter that and this time I'm going to use the y position I don't have cursors on this machine so I'm going to use the y position to position the bottom of that waveform there in line with the graticule line there as best I can and I'm going to view that through the camera so hopefully you get minimum of parallax and now what we can see I'm actually going to move the top of that waveform so it's on this um, graticule here so I'm just going to use X position to do that so hopefully what you can now see um, is we've got one two and it's not quite three it's actually about it's actually about 3.8 because those are 0.2 those divisions so it's about 3.8 divisions from one peak to the other and the wire amplifier is set to 5 volts per division so well again let's do the math so that's 2.8 times 5 gives us 14 volts peak to peak now Mm, that's interesting because the meter said it was 5 volts and that's quite a bit different to, to 14 um, well hopefully um, if you've been following along at home you'll know of course that um, the meter that I used uh, me produces an RMS measurement and uh, RMS is the um, average voltage compared the average um, power compared to a, a similar DC voltage I don't want to get into the details of that explaining that here but essentially um, obviously you've got peaks and troughs here so you haven't got the same amount of power all the time so RMS is an attempt to average that and give it a comparison compared to DC so um, the easy way to convert that the formula um, I'll just put up there for you uh, voltage in RMS is equal to 1 over 2 um, times the square root of 2 um, and then you multiply that by your, your voltage peak to peak and that gives you the volts RMS so if you do that 1 over 2 times the square root of 2 that comes out at 0 0.3536 so um, we said we've got 14 volts so times that by 0 0.3536 gives us 4.95 volts ah so now we're beginning to agree with what was said on the meter so um, yes we're seeing quite a different thing there to what the meter was telling us the meter was telling us 5 volts yet here we're seeing 14 so those of you who live in countries where the mains voltage is 200 and something as as we do in the UK um, you might expect that um, voltage to be about 230 volts actually it's going to be a lot more than that um, peak to peak so um, be aware of that if you're thinking of um, probing the mains which I wouldn't um, recommend okay that's it that's um, measurements compared to the meter now let's let's go back to the meter and have another look okay so we're back um, the meter there and um, Again, I'm going to attach the meter probe to the voltage source, and you can hopefully see there we've got um, a similar answer. We've got 5 volts at 59.9 hertz, 60 hertz. So that's um, reading exactly the same as before. Now let's um, let's take away the meter and let's attach the scope probe. Um, to exactly the same voltage and hopefully what you can now see is we've got a square wave um, now because of this at 60 Hertz you can't see the rise and fall terribly well but 
certainly have got a square wave there. So let's just verify first of all that we agree that it's 60 hertz. So it's going to be from the edge of that one to the edge of that one. So if I use the X position to position the edge of that um, uh, the waveform top there till it's in line with the graticule as best as I can in the in the camera screen, and you can hopefully see that again one two three and it's not three and a quarter and it's not three and a half it's about 3.3 .3 again um, and you may recall that 3.3 um, uh, times five milliseconds gives us 0 0.0165 seconds for the period and doing the math there gives us 60 hertz so it's definitely 60 hertz so the meter is telling us the truth there but the meter was also telling us that um, it was 5 volts as before with the sine wave so let's see what we've got in terms of um, the measurements on the on the y-axis and I can actually to get a bit more accuracy I can turn that up now so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from the top of that waveform to the top of that waveform there if I can squeeze it in I don't think I can actually but um, it was worth a try uh, let's see if I can how that looks on the no it's not quite going to do it I'm going to have to go back to there oh well it was worth a try so I'm going to position that bottom of the waveform there and we've got the top of the waveform it's probably about 2.1 remember those smaller divisions are 0 0.2 so it's about half of one of those so um 2.1 um times 5 so that's interesting because 2.1 times 5 volts per division gives us an answer of 10 and a half volts now we had 14 volts before yet the meter was still saying that um uh, we'd got a 5 volt output and of course the whole point of um this explanation here is to, is to hopefully get you to understand that when you have a square wave there's actually um, uh, more power there because you haven't got that gentle rising and falling of the sine wave so it's um, effectively there's actually more power in a in a square wave and I picked a square wave because it's a very common way of um, of powering uh, motors using square waves using uh, using pulse width modulation and pulse width modulation essentially is about varying the width of the signal which you can see going on there as I vary the width of the pulse so our point here is if you're going to make measurements on a meter uh, a true RMS meter then um, as long as you've got a sine wave you're going to get a pretty accurate result um, if it's not a sine wave and you don't know that um, then the good old scope is exactly the kind of instrument you need um, to be able to explore that but hopefully that's um, uh, made a bit of sense there comparing peak to peak and RMS etc. Okay as a final example then we've got another voltage here I'm going to attach the meter and again we're getting 5 volts at 60 Hertz according to the to the meter so let's uh, have a look at that same uh, waveform on the scope. Let's get the scope attached. And now we've got a triangle waveform. Um, and obviously there's a lot less energy in a, a triangle wave as there would be in a square wave. So we would expect the voltage to be higher. Um, I think you can believe me that it's 60 hertz now. So I won't put you through the, the pain of showing you that again. But let's just adjust the bottom of the waveform there so it's um, in line with the graticule and I'm going to move it across so I can position it there and we've got one two three um, and it's about about 3.5 I would say something like that so we've got 3.5 times 5 volts per division actually gives us um, a peak to peak voltage there of 17 and a half volts uh, it was four remember it was 14 uh, volts with a sine wave and uh, with a triangle wave which obviously hasn't got quite so much energy we're up at um, 17 volts and again the meter just told us it was 5 volts and the peak to peak 
um, voltage is quite different. Now if you were to measure all three of those voltages on the meter without changing the the peak to peak, uh, as I have done on the on the voltage source, then the meter would read um, would give you a higher figure for the square wave and a lower figure for the sawtooth wave like this, a triangular wave like this. And it's only an oscilloscope that's going to show you uh, what's really going on. So hopefully you've seen some um, measurements there using good old trusty analog scope. Um, and that's um, might perhaps encourage you, you don't have to have a really flashy scope to be able to do all this. Now if I'd have done this on my uh, digital scope it would have told me the frequency straight away somewhere up here and if I'd asked it to I could have produced cursors and I could have measured the voltage peak to peak but there's also a, a function to to be able to do that as part of the measurement so modern scopes yeah very nice indeed and even even the cheapest ones contain very good uh, measurement tools like that hopefully though uh, that's shown you that you don't need um, flashy expensive scope to see what's going on with a waveform and to make some measurements OK, well there you have it, um, some interesting results. So if the meter says true RMS, um, it's certainly going to give you very accurate results if it's working with um, a genuine sine wave. Um, if the waveform isn't a sine wave, then the results uh, are going to be uh, different, quite obviously. Um, so I think that's a damn good excuse for buying an oscilloscope if you haven't already got one. And hopefully what you've seen me do in this video, um, you'll recognise can be done with pretty much any oscilloscope, even those ones that you can buy and build from a kit would be more than capable of making the measurements that you've seen me making um, here today. So I hope that's inspired you to have a go. Um, it's helped me out in a strange kind of way because when I was making the voltage measurements, um, I realised something wasn't quite right. Now my analog scope is a 1970s instrument, so it's you know 40 years old at least, and I realised it was um, actually reading slightly under. So that encouraged me to get the manual out, um, find out where the Y amplifier adjustment was, uh, and I've now um, adjusted it so that um, it does read correctly um, to the best of the. Um, voltage sources that I've got. So that's helped me from an accuracy um, point of view as well. If you've been um, watching the videos for a while you'll know sometimes you see me mention um, the Kaiwitz multimeters. I used one in this video, the KM601. Um, there is a link in the description to the Kaiwitz website. If you are fancying a multimeter and one of those fits the bill, if you use the code um, again down in the description you'll get a bit of discount and that will also help the channel in a small way um, I'd really appreciate that thanks to all of you who have already done that that is most definitely appreciated and hopefully um, you'll consider liking and subscribing this video and we'll see you on the next one